This is an example of what an earthquake looks like when we record it. Um, these top six traces here are all coming from one station. And when we get an earthquake, we get numerous traces that uh, come in from all across the country. This is uh, an animation that's just going to show how we actually record an earthquake. We have an example of three seismic stations. And these are linked to the, d the um, data center by satellite. And this is going to show the uh, traces, the seismic records, as they come in when the earthquake happens. So when the earthquake happens, these two different lines are going to represent the P waves, which is the yellow line. It's always the fastest wave. It's always the first one to arrive. And the S waves, which is the orange line. And that's always the second wave to arrive. So you can see when we're close to the epicenter of the earthquake, to where the earthquake originated, the P waves and the S waves are very close to one another. As they travel along, the separation between the, the P and the S waves gets greater and greater. So there's a clear distinction between the P waves and the S waves. We now see the S waves have started to arrive at the second station, and there's a greater time separation between the P and the S wave, so you can tell that the second station is further away from the earthquake than the first station was. And if we continue this along a little further, we now see the P waves starting to come in at the furthest station. And then finally, if we keep the animation going, we now see the S waves arriving at the furthest station. And we can also see the amplitudes of the waves getting less and less with, with each station because the, um, the seismic energy spreads out the further and further away you get from the epicenter of the earthquake, and therefore the amplitudes get smaller and smaller. Okay, so this animation is going to show how we can actually get the location of the earthquake. So once we've, we have determined how far the earthquake is from um, a particular station, we can basically draw a circle around the station because we know how far it is from that station, but we don't know in what direction. And it could be anywhere on that circle. Now if we get that same information from a second station, we can draw a circle around it, and these two circles will intersect at two points. And so we know that the earthquake has to be located at one of those two spots. So if we get that same information then from a third station, we can see that the three circles will intersect at only one location, and that's where the earthquake is. Now, in actual practice, there's going to be a little bit of error when you do this on getting the distances from each station, and so these uh, <coughs> the circles won't, a won't nicely overlap at one single point. But if you do this with a number of stations, say 10 or 12 stations, something like that, you can get a very well-defined location for the earthquake within maybe two or three kilometers. Again, we can extend this to uh, three dimensions. So not only can we get the, the, the location on the surface, but we can actually tell how deep the earthquake was. So whether it was five kilometers deep, 20 kilometers deep, 100 kilometers deep, um, something like that. The very last step then is, is to get the magnitude of the earthquake. And the magnitude of the earthquake depends on, again, on the height of these signals that we receive at the different stations. So um, there's an equation that factors in both the height of the signal, the size of the, the amplitude of the signal, and the distance from the station. And we can use that, we, get, we do that for a number of different stations, and then average the results to get the magnitude of the earthquake.